Sarah and Jamie were walking along a rough, unfenced track that might once have been a road. On their right, a desolate, forbidding landscape stretched away to mountains on the horizon. On the other side, in the distance, they could just make out the outline of what looked like a city. Down the middle of the track was a faint white line. Look, there's a notice stuck right in the middle of the road. Maybe it'll tell us where we are. What does it say? The line! The line? Nothing else? No, great lot of use that is. Like we don't know what a line looks like. Are you sure there isn't something else on it? Uh, there's something in very faint little letters. No city dwellers beyond this point. I think that's what it says. That's a great help. Maybe we should head for the city before it gets dark. What time is it? That's odd. What is? My new watch. It seems to have gone crazy. The date says 7th of October 2196. You must have been fiddling with the controls. No, I don't remember touching them at all. Hey, what was that? What? I thought I saw something move behind that boulder. Pippo! See, there was something there. Made you jump. <laughs> jump, jump. Where did you spring from? Uh-oh, CDs. What? CDs. Over there. No, I'm off. Oh, CDs. You mean city dwellers? Where's she gone? A bit garish, isn't it? That car. All purple and green. Yuck. Who are you? Not Outlanders, by the look of you. Outlanders? What are Outlanders? Oh, don't play games with me, Miss Clever. Or you'd be sorry. No one plays games with Cobb. At least not if they want to live to a right old middle age. Oh, I'll have to teach you a lesson. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Get a load of this. Oh! oh, oh. Hey, what's happening? Oh. Feels like some kind of octopus has got inside my brain. Oh. And it's worming its way around in there. I can't move. See? Nobody messes with Cobb. What was all that about? Well, now I know you're not a threat, don't I? But we'll have to get rid of you all the same. Wait a minute. There's been some kind of mistake. You don't need to kill us. Oh! Oh, what was that? Someone squeezed my mind like an orange. It wasn't us. Oh, it couldn't have been you. There's nothing in your heads that could do that. There must be something else very near. Hmm. It was you? Yes, it was. And you'd better keep away, unless you want me to do it again. I... Uh, I'll... I'll be back. Topeka, there you are. How many times have I told you not to go near the line? If the CDs get their hands on you, there's no knowing what might happen to you. And who are these two? Oh, this one's Sarah, and that's Jamie. Hi, how did you know our names? I looked in your minds. They're friendly. We don't need to worry about them. Well, I'm Radika, Topeka's sister. We'd better get away from those city dwellers. That's not such a bad idea. Topeka just saved us from that one over there. Fortunately, they don't dare step over the line because of what we outlanders might do to them. They believe that all outlanders are telepaths who can kill with a mind ray. What they don't know is that all our telepaths are young children, like Topeka. When they grow up, they lose their powers. But that cob over there, he's older than any of us, and he managed to read our minds. He's a telepath? A CD? Yeah, that's right. I'm unique, the mighty telepathic cob. No one dares cross me for fear of what might happen to them. Let's go. Sarah and Jamie, you can come with us if you like. Wait, 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 wait. So no CD dares cross the line, you say, huh? That's what you think. We'll see what happens, shan't we? We'll teach us outlanders a lesson. What's on the line? Can he do that? He can do anything he wants. We'd better get back home. We can go across country. It'll be impossible for a car to follow. Where's home? Little Stratton. It's a little place deep in the country. What if Cobb finds it? With any luck, he'll run out of fuel and starve to death wandering around in the wilderness. Tell us what outlanders are. Well, we were all CDs once. After the destruction, most people huddled together in what was left of the cities. Hang on a minute. What was this destruction? Surely you must have heard of the destruction. 
Don't you know any history? Sorry, never was my strong point. I'm surprised you've never heard of it. The destruction took place in 2066. Exactly 1,000 years after the Norman Conquest. That's right. It was the end of the mighty war when the great powers let off all their missiles in one go. Most of the world's population was wiped out. Oh. After the destruction, they found that some children were being born with extraordinary mind powers, like Topeka. Other people feared them, so they were banished to the wilderness. The Outlands, which is why we're called Outlanders. And they drew a line to separate us. The CDs can't come over our side of the line, and we Outlanders can't cross over to their side. Not that we would want to. Who'd want to live in a horrible, smelly city? We'd better get moving. Our parents will be worried. Supper must nearly be ready. They'll wonder where we are. You lead the way. We're right behind you. so she can send out messages. Telepathic ones, you mean? That's right. It won't take her long. She can summon all the people from the neighbouring settlements without having to go there. That's clever. I'd better call everyone from our own village. What about us? What do you think we should do? Get out the back of the house, quick. You're having another one of your ideas, aren't you? <laughs> That's brilliant, Jamie. You must be telepathic. Oh, very funny. What's your plan then? Come outside and I'll tell you. Hey, there you are! Get back before it gets me! Hey, there you outlanders! Go on, take a good look at me, come on! The first telepathic CD! We're going to have a bit of fun, aren't we? I don't think I like his idea of fun. Oh. Oh. Now, ready for you this time, won't I, little outlander? You can't squeeze my mind, but I'm going to squeeze yours. You won't know what's hit you. Ah, somebody help, please! The peacock! <laughs> Here you are, Jamie, <laughs> now! <laughs> Great shot, Jamie. Brilliant, eh? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yes, you wait. You, you, you may not be an outlander, but I'm still gonna get you. Nobody gets away with attacking cop. Somebody get him out of that trough. He oh. looks ridiculous. Oh, come on, you. Oh, oh. What's the matter with him? Probably got a splitting oh. headache from my stone. Serves him right. <laughs> Forgive me. I didn't really want to hurt you. I just want to be friends. Could have fooled me. In the city, I'm, I'm the only telepath. I'm so lonely. I've always wanted to be one of you. He's having you on. Don't listen to him. Don't send me back to the city. No, Nobody there knows I'm a telepath. He's lying. Don't let him fool you. Maybe he has a point. All right, release him. He's an outlander now. Oh. Oh, my friends. Oh, thank you. Thank you for welcoming me and for being so stupid. Told you he couldn't be trusted. Revenge. <laughs> Watch out, everybody. He sent me out of mind, Ray. <gasps> Don't imagine I've forgotten you two, you nasty little strangers. You injured me, you remember, and no one injures cop and lives to tell the tale. Jamie, he's got a huge knife! Say goodbye to your heads! Help somebody! Huh? What's happening? I think you might be about to get a taste of your own medicine. What? 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 He's suspended in the air! How did they do that? All those kids who've just come from the other villages. 
must all be telepaths. Mm -hmm. So their combined mind power is keeping Cobb hanging in the air. Must be. I wish I could do that. Oh, get me down from here! Please, I'll do anything you say! What do you think? We can't set him free, can we? He's not to be trusted. That's the understatement of the 22nd century. I've got an idea. What's that? We'll all have to go up to the line, the whole lot of us. And take him with us? We can shove him in the back of a wagon. What if he tries to run away? He won't. There are too many of us this time. We can hold him in a mind grip. Come on, then, everybody. To the line. Hooray! Alive. Yeah, yes, I'll do anything you say. Just just make those children take their mind rays off me. It's getting very uncomfortable. Move, quickly. All right, all right. I'm moving as fast as I can. Stop, on the line. Stay where you are. OK, you lot, fix that point inside his mind. Now. That. They implanted a terrible fear in his mind, a fear of the line. It will stay with him for the rest of his life. He'll never dare to venture this far from the city again, let alone cross the line. Yeah! 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 We're safe from him now forever. What if there are others like him in the city? Don't be a misery, Guts Jamie, just when we're having a happy ending. Sorry. How about a celebration then? Maybe a big feast back at the village. That sounds like an excellent idea. What do you all think? Yes! A celebration it is then. Down with Cobb! Yeah! And all the CDs! Yeah! Long live the Outlanders! The music in Outlanders is taken from Rhapsody on a Theme of Paganini by Rachmaninoff. The short introduction to the music ends with a great flurry, like a giant sneeze. Then we hear the light and humorous music of the first variation, followed by Paganini's tune, played by the violins. Violins add a touch of romance with high, sweeping phrases. The piano shares a quiet duet with the bassoon while the violins play fragments of Paganini's tune. piano plays a lively jumping tune with exciting whirring trills. Suddenly the music sounds like galloping horses. The 
clarinet plays a low march tune, while the piano plays the famous Dies Irae, which means Day of Wrath melody. Animated cymbal clashes and striking jazz rhythms follow. The slow minuet has song-like melodies for several solo instruments. The most famous part of the music is a beautiful haunting melody, first played by the piano. And then by the full orchestra. As the music moves energetically to its conclusion, we hear a skipping theme. The music rises in a tremendously exciting climax, only to end in a hushed, light-hearted whisper. These are just some of the highlights of Rachmaninoff's Rhapsody on a Theme of Paganini. You're bound to discover more every time you listen.